Hello and welcome to this film. It's the third in a series of six about higher level energetics and here we're going to be talking about Born Harbor cycles. Now if you've got a good understanding of Hess's law cycles there's really nothing particularly difficult about Born Harbor cycles but you do need to know some definitions so we're going to have to define some key terms in this film such as lattice enthalpy, electron affinity and the enthalpy of atomization and we're going to start combining all these different enthalpy changes with others that we already know about to construct Born Harbor cycles for ionic substances. Now let's start off by having a very quick reminder of Hess's law. Hess's law applies to Born Harbor cycles but remember our Hess's law cycles typically have looked a bit like this and they've said that it doesn't matter how you get from A to B the enthalpy change is always the same. Well a Born Harbor cycle is just a big Hess's law cycle but without this definition it's very hard to understand what they're for because at the heart of most of them is this thing called a lattice enthalpy. right? And like most enthalpy changes this is defined and it's an important definition to know and it starts with the enthalpy change when. This, this enthalpy, the lattice enthalpy, refers to the enthalpy change when one mole of an ionic lattice is broken down in, into its gaseous ions at 298 Kelvin. This is a very, very artificial situation. It's not normal conditions, okay? And it's something that's quite hard to carry out. So often, if we can determine what it might be from a cycle, then we've got a better chance of measuring it than actually by doing the experiment ourselves. However, it's worth noting that because this is breaking bonds, it's always going to be endothermic or a positive quantity. And it's going to be a large number when the bonds are strong. Now, when are ionic bonds going to be strong? And again, this is an important thing to know. Well, the closer ions can get to each other, the more strongly they'll attract. So small ions or ionic lattices with small ions will have large lattice enthalpies or larger ones than ones with big ions. That's assuming that the charges are the same, of course, because if you have high charges, you're going to attract more strongly than atoms with low charges. So charge or increasing charge leads to increasing lattice enthalpy and decreasing size leads to decrease it leads to increasing lattice enthalpy as well okay so let's just have a look a quick look at a born harbor cycle and see where this lattice enthalpy fits in okay there's some other steps here some of which we know about some of which we don't okay in particular this one is new and so is this one and i'm going to talk about those in just a moment but here is this lattice enthalpy. We're taking one mole of an ionic lattice and we're breaking it up into gaseous ions here. Okay? There's some other changes on here which should be familiar to us. But what we're going to see here, or what we should be able to see here, is that like a smaller Hess's law cycle, there are different ways of going around this thing. So, for example, if I wanted to know what energy was involved in going from here to here, I wouldn't have to go that way. I could come round the cycle in this direction, so long as I know what all the figures are. Anyway, a bit more about all these changes in just a moment. A couple more definitions first, because everyone loves a good definition. So, first of all, the electron affinity. This is the enthalpy change when. How surprising. We've got an enthalpy definition that starts with the enthalpy change when. One mole of gaseous atoms is turned into one mole of gaseous 1 minus ions. And like the ionization energy definition, which we should know, where we're turning things into gaseous 1 plus ions, this is quite similar. And it's, well, there's lots of different ways of expressing it. But basically, we're taking electrons away from gaseous atoms and turning them into gaseous 1 minus ions and we're doing it at 298 Kelvin okay which is a very very artificial situation okay it's the enthalpy change when we're forming 1 minus ions from 1 mole of gaseous atoms another definition because I'm sure you haven't had enough of definitions yet this is the enthalpy of atomization and this is the enthalpy change when one mole of gaseous atoms is formed from an element at 298 Kelvin. Okay, So we're not atomizing the substance by just by heating it up, because we have to do this under certain conditions. And again, this is a very, very artificial situation that you couldn't do in a normal lab. 
you need some quite high-tech equipment to measure this. Anyway, coming back to our Bourne Harbour cycle now and seeing where these things fit in. Because it's crucial that we are able to label one of these cycles, that we can construct one, and that we can see where all these enthalpies that we've talked about fit in. Okay? So once again, we've got, and paying very careful attention here to what's different between these levels, right, and the states that things are in. Okay? Here we've got one mole of an ionic substance. doesn't matter that it's ionic, I suppose. It's being formed from its elements. So if one mole of a substance is forming from its elements, this must be the standard enthalpy of formation. Right? Here is a lattice dissociation enthalpy. So this is the lattice enthalpy we talked about earlier. We've got one mole of an ionic lattice forming gaseous ions. Now... Let's think about how we might get from the elements to these gaseous ions instead of going round this way. Because sometimes we're asked to calculate this and we don't know what it is. So what do we have to do to get there? Well, what have we got going on? We've got a sodium atom, or rather one mole of sodium in its standard state turning into one mole of gaseous sodium atoms. So this thing here must be an enthalpy of atomization of sodium. What do we have to do next? Well, to turn gaseous sodium atoms into gaseous sodium ions, we have to remove electrons. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We're taking one mole of sodium atoms in the gaseous state and forming one mole of gaseous 1 plus ions. Remember, this is the first ionization energy of sodium. I'm going to change colours now because we've changed sodium into what we want it to be here. So I'm going to talk about the chlorine now. What's happening to the chlorine here? Well, nothing at all. What's happening to the chlorine here? Nothing. We've still got a half Cl2. What's happening to the chlorine there? Well, we're turning it from molecules into atoms. And if we're breaking bonds, we might be talking about bond enthalpies, right? But remember, the bond enthalpy is when one mole of bonds is broken. This is only talking about half a mole of bonds. So this is half the bond enthalpy. Okay? It could also be the enthalpy of atomization of chlorine, but it's also half the bond enthalpy. Now, what's going on from here down to here? Well, the chlorine is gaining an electron. In fact, one mole of gaseous chlorine atoms is gaining one mole of electrons to form one mole of gaseous one minus ions. So this here must be the electron affinity of chlorine. And notice this is exothermic, right? Because electrons are attracted to atoms. Right? Atoms like to gain electrons, so this is an exothermic change. So here we are. We've got a Born Harbor cycle with all the changes labeled on it. Okay? And we can use it, hopefully, to find this. So, for example, if I didn't know this, but I knew all the other quantities, I'm going from here to here. I can do that by going against the enthalpy of formation with this enthalpy of atomization, with this first ionization energy, with this half a bond enthalpy, and with this electron affinity. And summing all those numbers, I'd get a value for this. Okay, remember this is just in principle. We'll go through some examples in the next film. Now, that Born Harbor cycle we just looked at dealt with singly charged ions. This is a slightly more complicated situation because we're making sodium oxide, and sodium oxide has O2 minus ions in it. So again, here is the lattice enthalpy. Rather annoyingly, but you see this in some books, the lattice enthalpy here is being given as negative. In other words, it's talking about the formation of the lattice from the ions, okay? But we are to be used to it going that way in IV exams, okay? So we're taking one mole of this lattice and breaking it up into its ions. If we're going to form oxide ions from oxygen, we not only need the electron affinity of oxygen, where we turn an oxygen atom into an oxygen 1 minus ion, but we need the second electron affinity of oxygen as well, because we're going to have to stick a second electron onto an O minus ion. Okay, so just like you can have second ionization energies, you can have second electron affinities. And notice this is now an endothermic process, whereas the 
first elect that should say one really was the first electron affinity was an exothermic process why might that be well because you're taking a negative particle and you're trying to add an electron to it and they repel each other so they don't really want to do it in actual fact this is a very very hard thing to measure as you might expect now what we can see here is that in this particular cycle and in the one before all the endothermic changes are going up and all the exothermic ones are going down okay it's not essential that you can do that in an exam okay and just to show you an example of a born harbor cycle that involves doubly charged ions right but kind of combines certain things so it shows what's happening to the magnesium and the oxygen as separate things and then the gaseous ions turning into the solid and remember here it's being given as a negative quantity but we ought to expect this to be a positive quantity because we're talking about the lattice being broken okay and you can see here that rather than it always having to go up or down they've combined the energies that are involved in giving the electrons to oxygen one is endothermic one's exothermic as long as you've got a cycle that works that's the main thing but it's important to realize that if you're given a cycle you have to be able to label the changes on it Okay, so these are the things to check that you can do. You can draw a Born Harbor cycle for potassium fluoride and calcium sulfide. Why should you be able to do this? Because I haven't shown you how to do it. Well, because you've seen it for sodium chloride, which involves sodium turning into Na+. This just involves potassium turning into K+. And chloride turning into, uh, chlorine turning into chloride. Well, here we've got fluorine turning into fluoride. Okay, so very similar. And we've also got this case with a doubly charged species because we're forming Ca2 plus ions and S2 minus ions. So check that you can sketch a Born Harbor cycle for those. Okay, check that you can label the species on each level, paying careful attention to their state symbols. So should they be solids or gases, right? And bear in mind the definitions tell you that. Okay, label the enthalpy changes. Which ones are which? Okay, so which one's the enthalpy of atomization or electron affinity or ionization energy and so on and so forth. And if you've got numbers on your Born Harbor cycle, check that you could use the numbers to find any unknown values. Okay, and we're going to go through some specific examples of all this stuff in the next film. Okay, so if you can't do that yet, let or if you feel like you can't, then see if you can watch the next film and then come back to this and see if you can do it. Okay information overload hopefully not but um, hopefully it's making sense if it's not you know what to do and that is to come and ask or to post some comments on YouTube but hopefully you can define these terms now if you don't remember yet make sure you practice them because they do get tested and hopefully you feel that at least you've got some idea of combining them into a Born Harbor cycle even if you want to watch the next film for some examples so as I say any questions come and see me or post a comment on YouTube